Uh, good morning, Lake Point Church and guests. Uh, hey, could we all stand together? And what I'd love to do is I would love for us just to start this service off with a word of prayer. So let's uh, pray together. Heavenly Father, we are just in incredibly honored that you are in this place. Holy Spirit, we know you're here. We ask you uh, that you move and have your way. Speak to our hearts, Lord, through the, through the worship, uh, through the speaking, through the preaching of your word. I pray, Father, your fellowship will be strong. And I pray, Lord Jesus, that you do an incredible work in our midst, in our lives here today. We give you praise for all that you've done and all that you're going to do. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. All right. Uh, I hope you're ready to worship. We've got some uh, great songs here lifting up to our great God and King who does great things. And uh, we're going to lift them up in Jesus' name. Great things. 
And I tell you, as we think about those things, uh, I know this, that the battles in our lives, that he's there to fight them. That right there is a great thing. He's there with us. The river storm. When all I see is a battle, you see my victory. Oh, we all have battles to face. When all I see is a mountain, you see a mountain bird. And as I walk through the shadow, your love surrounds me. Thank you for your love. There's nothing to fear now, for I am saved in you. I'll fight our battles, Lord. So when I fight, I fight on my knees, with my hands lifted high. Oh, God, the battle belongs to you. could be against me. Are you for us? Thank you, Jesus. For Jesus is nothing impossible for you. When all I see are the ashes, you see the beauty. Oh, he's turning ashes into beauty. When all I see is a cross, God, you see the empty tomb. Oh, thank you, Jesus, for the empty grave. So when I fight, I fight on my knees with my hands lifted high. Oh, God, the battle belongs to you. Every fear I lay at your feet, I'll sing through the night. can stand against the power of our God. You shine in the shadows. You win every battle. Oh, you believe it? Nothing can stand against the power of our God. Almighty fortress, you go before us. Nothing can stand against the power of our God. You shine shadow. You win every battle. Nothing can stand against the power of our God. Almighty fortress, you go before us. Nothing can stand against the power of our God. You shine in the shadow. You win every battle. Nothing can stand against the power of our God. So when I fight, I fight on my knees with my hands lifted high. Oh God, the battle belongs to you. And every fear I lay at your feet, I'll sing through the night. our battles no matter what happens in our life we can be assured that he is here and he is ready to uh to just fight for us all we got to do is just give it up to him and i tell you it's uh, us being able to sing the songs of praise in the middle of that battle is really what it's all about here's a great song of worship a thousand generations 
falling down in worship to sing the song of ages to the Lamb. Yes. And all who've gone before us and all who will believe will sing the song of ages to the Lamb. Oh, it's all about your name. Your name is the highest. Your name is the greatest. Your name stands above them all. All thrones and dominions, all powers and positions. Your name stands above them all. And the angels cry, Holy, all creation cries. dismiss our kids, but before they go, let's pray over them. So if there's a child that is nearby, 
Obviously, if it's your child, you can touch them. If it's not your child, don't touch them. But just uh, like stretch your hand, hands out towards them. And let's uh, just pray uh, a prayer that they will be uh, filled with what God wants to have for them today. Lord Jesus, we come before you. Thank you, new Lord, for the children. Lord Jesus, you loved the little children. You love them, Father. You show that in your word, and you do not want anybody to hinder them from coming to you, Father. We all need to approach you as a childlike faith, and I pray, Father, that you would do a great work in the hearts of them. Lord, be with all of our volunteers from birth all the way up to fifth grade, oh Lord, as they work with these kids and as they teach them about God's love and what Jesus has done for them. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Hey, let's give them a praise and uh, just uh, congratulations for being here and wanted to go back there. Awesome. You guys, please be seated at this time. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Lake Point Church. Uh, my name is River Brandon, and this is my wife, Jameson. We'll be your hosts for today's service. <clears throat> We're honored that you're here uh, to join us here at Lake Point Church. Uh, there's multiple ways that you can connect with us here if uh, you are a first-time guest um, or if you're watching online. Um, the first way is you can uh, fill out a virtual connection card by going to lakepointonline.com forward slash connect. Um, that will take you to our virtual connection link and you can fill out your information there. Uh, second, if you're here in service, um, you should have received a bulletin when you came into service today. There is a QR code located on that bulletin. If you scan the QR code, it will take you to that same online connection point. Uh, and then third, you can text the word CONNECT to 833-429-6868. Again, that is the word CONNECT to 833-429-6868. Uh, Jameson has some things that she'd like to share about ways you can get involved here at the church and in our local community. Good morning, everyone. We do have a few announcements. Our first announcement is for our students. Um, students, you, this is for high school and middle school age kids. Um, we are going to Lake Point Station on Wednesday to play laser tag and do bowling. Um, that is $12 to be able to do that. You can sign up on our website or through the church's mobile app. Our next announcement is also for the youth. This is a one-day mission trip that we are taking, not this Monday, but next Monday, July 17th. Um, to the Atlanta Community Food Bank. You can sign up to do that as well on the website or the mobile app. And our last announcement for our youth is our rafting trip that is taking place on Wednesday, July 19th. Um, parents, you are also allowed to come to that. Um, that is a $45 cost to be able to do the rafting trip um, here in a couple weeks. Ladies, we are having ladies night coming up um, on Friday, July 21st. That is um, taking place at North Star Church at 7 o'clock p.m. We are going to see Mo Aiken. She is a phenomenal speaker, um, so you don't want to miss this. It's $20 to do that, and you can get in contact with Suzanne Bennett to sign up for that. And our last announcement is for our kiddos. They just left, but parents, um, we are having a end of summer um, pool party for our kiddos on Saturday, July 22nd from 2 to 4 o'clock in the afternoon. This is taking place at um, Valerie and Patrick Weiss's house in New Harley. And one final thing. Uh, this past week we went and watched the Sounds of Freedom film. Uh, it is really eye-opening and really good. Uh, there is ways to get free tickets online, so if you research the movie uh, Sounds of Freedom, um, you can get free tickets online to go watch the movie uh, in what that, the, the theater. Yeah, the theater. It's really good, so highly recommend going to watch it. Um, but other than that, we invite you to stand and greet those around you. Good morning. Okay, as we close out this uh, music portion of our worship, if everybody can please stand, come out to your, uh, your place. Uh, we're we're going to introduce, we're not introduced, we, we've been singing this song for a few weeks, and uh, I think by now, I think we can kind of own it a little bit uh, as, a, as a church, uh, meaning be comfortable singing it. And um, it's a, simply, a song that's simply called Jesus Does. And uh, if you ever have, have a question mark about what uh, you're facing in your life, either you or someone you're close to, what they're facing in this life, uh, just know this, Jesus understands. Jesus does understand. Jesus, uh, Jesus does help you. 
Jesus, uh, whatever the question mark is, Jesus is the answer. And so that's what this song talks about. So if, you are, if you're just having a burden on your life, uh, either for yourself or family or friend, just uh, as you sing this song, just replace that situation with those simple words, Jesus does. Son Jesus to die on the cross for us. Thank you, Jesus, for suffering for us. Thank you, Jesus, for taking all of the, the pain away. Even though we still pain, feel pain on this earth, Lord. Jesus, because you took on suffering yourself, we can rest assured that you have been where we are. Jesus, you uh, you suffered greatly on this earth, not only on the cross. But you even had friends, and family, loved ones that passed on. You felt that pain. The Bible says you even cried. And Lord Jesus, you, you felt rejection. 
even by your closest friends. You know what that feels like. And on top of that, you, you felt the pain of the cross and the beatings on your back and the crown of thorns. And so Jesus, we know what you, we know that you, I know what it feels like to be hurt. So we're not alone. And Jesus does. Jesus does understand. Jesus does feel your pain. Jesus does understand it all. Thank you, Jesus. In your precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. Please be seated at this time. come to the uh, part of our service where we get to give the Lord our tithes and our offering. And before we do that, I want to let you know that, um, so the month of July, we're not in a, um, in a series. And uh, so uh, Pastor Terry and I, Pastor uh, Terry is our discipleship pastor. And so he and I are just tag teaming on some things that we feel like God is, has been speaking to us. And not that sermon series, we're, he doesn't speak through us, obviously, because he does. Um, but in, in the month of July, just things that are fresh, things that are on the forefront of, of what God has been uh, dealing with us and uh, in our quiet time and our time with him. And so this is sort of a, a, a fresh look of, um, of the Holy Spirit speaking to our lives. I spoke last week. He's going to speak today. Then we're just going to tag team out uh, through the month of uh, July. But I will say this. In the month of August, um, we do have a series um, on prayer coming in August, and I'm telling you, this is something that, I know prayer is powerful, prayer is important, but as a church, um, and you'll see, we're going to be rolling out some things on prayer, and so um, just kind of get ready for, uh, to put your prayer hat on, because we're going to be asking our church to do some very big things, and believe in some very big things in prayer, and prayer is going to uh, be uh, even more evident in our services and uh, so you'll, you'll kind of see that as we approach that. And so I'm really, really excited about this series starting in August. But until then, uh, we're going to be tag teaming in that. But we're asking the Lord to bless our tithes and our offering. And if you want to give to Lake Point Church, if you're here, there's an offering box in the back with offering envelopes. You can feel free to do that. If, if you want to give online, if you're that kind of uh, giver, uh, you can just simply uh, go to lakepointonline.com, go to give at the top, or you can... Uh, simply go to um, uh, your phone, and you can text the word GIVE to 833-429-6868. Uh, uh, and uh, by the way, that number, you could do, uh, you can access lots of things. Uh, like, for instance, one thing we launched this week is uh, if you want to listen to the upcoming songs for Sunday, we'll try to load them up around Tuesday but um, for the, follow for the uh, upcoming week. But you could type the word SONGS, S-O-N-G-S, uh, to that same number, and it'll give you a link to uh, uh, a YouTube link that has the playlist of the songs for the upcoming week, and you just listen to those. So that way, on Sunday, you're ready to go, and you're familiar with the songs. And uh, so, uh, so that that phone number is really used for lots of things. And uh, um, if you have prayer requests, type to the word prayer, and uh, it'll it'll take you to a form you can fill out. Type the word connect. And there's lots of things you can do, but. For, to give, you just have to word give, and you can go uh, go to that. Uh, but let's ask the Lord to uh, give uh, to bless His tithe and our offering to the betterment of His kingdom and His purpose. Heavenly Father, we come before you, thanking you, Lord Jesus, for all that you've given to us. Lord, for your many blessings. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for meeting us here today, for speaking to us in your time of worship. I pray, Father, that you bless your word here today. Uh, Lord, I, I know that you've spoken to Pastor Terry's heart, and I pray, Father, that he speaks with boldness and that he speaks with authority and humility. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, let's give it up for Terry as he comes and preaches. Amen. Thanks, brother. That's one thing for sure that the, the Holy Spirit never stops working, just like Jesus and like God. They never stop working. Even in your times of this, you know, whatever you're going through, 
They're always there for you. Please never forget that. Let's pray. Father, Holy Spirit, and Jesus, thank you that you are here with us today. Holy Spirit, humble us, teach us, mold us, convict us, whatever else that needs to be done. And Father, may the meditation of my heart be with you. Holy Spirit, be with me. Get me out of the way and have you speak through me. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, let's go right to the Word of God. Let's go to Hebrews chapter 4, starting with verse 14, and we're going to go through 5.10. Again, Hebrews 4, 14 to 5.10. Since then, we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God. Let us hold fast our confession For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but one who in every respect has been tempted as we are, yet without sin. Let us then with confidence draw near to the throne of grace, that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. For every high priest chosen from among men is appointed to act on behalf of of men in relation to God to offer gifts and sacrifices for sins. He can deal gently with the ignorant and wayward since he himself is beset with weakness. Because of this, he is obligated to offer sacrifice for his own sins just as he does for those of the people. And no one takes this honor for himself but only when called by God just as Aaron was. So also Christ did not exalt himself to be made a high priest, but was appointed by him who said to him, You are my son. Today I have begotten you. As he says also in another place, You are a priest forever, after the order of Melchizedek. In the days of his flesh, Jesus offered up prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to him who was able to save him from death, and he was heard because of his reverence. Although he was a son, he learned obedience through what he suffered. And being made perfect, he became the source of all eternal salvation to all who obey him, being designated by God as a priest after the order of Melchizedek. The overall theme of this message, Jesus, our perfect priest. For those that have been in church for many years and have been in Bible classes and personal devotion, you know when, when somebody says priest, right? But sometimes when we are kids like me, growing up in the late 60s and early 70s, when you hear the word priest, what does that conjure up in your mind? Right? For me, it's like, okay, what you saw on TV in certain movies, you had a Catholic priest, right? That was my thought as a child of what a priest is and who that he became, whatever. And sometimes you've seen priests in movies, right? There were some weird movies back in the 70s, like The Exorcist, right? You know, that, that, that young girl floating above the bed. And I was young, I'm like, oh my. But who was there to help? The priest, right? So sometimes we have a different version of a priest in our mind, but we know in Scripture it's different than the real world. A very simple definition of a priest is a person who has the authority to lead or perform religious ceremonies. In Scripture, the high priest was the supreme religious leader of the Israelites, The office of the high priest was hereditary and was traced from Aaron, the brother of Moses of the Levite tribe. The high priest had to be whole physically and holy in his conduct. Think about that. The high priest had to offer sin offering not only for the sins of the whole congregation, but also for himself. This was interesting to me. I was doing research When a high priest died, all those confined to the cities of refuge for accidentally causing the death of another person were granted freedom. 
So you kind of wonder, the people that are outside of Israel that are waiting for a priest to die to have freedom again. The most important duty of the high priest was to conduct a service on the Day of Atonement, the tenth day of the seventh month of every year. Only he was allowed to enter the most holy place behind the veil to stand before a holy God. Having made a sacrifice for himself and for the people, he then brought the blood into the holy of holies and sprinkled it on the mercy seat, God's throne. He did this to make atonement for himself and the people for all of their sins committed during the year that just ended. It is a particular service that is compared to the ministry of Jesus as our high priest. In understanding the role of the high priest, we can better comprehend the significance of Christ offering himself for our sins once and for all. Through Christ's sacrifice for us, we are sanctified and set apart for him. By entering God's presence on our behalf, Christ has secured for us an eternal redemption. Eternal redemption. As Paul has written, for there is one God and there is one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus. Our first point this morning is taken from Hebrews 4, verses 14 to 16. Jesus, as our high priest, identifies with us. He identifies with us. Here in verse 14, obviously, we have that Jesus is called a great high priest. He is a great high priest that is better than Aaron, better than any other man as a priest. After Jesus made the sacrifice once and for all on the cross, it says he passed through the heavens. And basically, there's been some debate on what those heavens are, but you know what? I'm not concerned about that because I'm concerned where Jesus is right now. He is there where God is right now in God's abode. Jesus went to where God himself dwells. Jesus did not pass through the tabernacle or the temple. This is the holiest of all holies as Jesus is there with God. Jesus has not left that place. He is there now. He is seated at the right hand of God. Because of Jesus dwelling with God, this puts the end to the Jewish priesthood of all the rituals and all the ceremonies and all the sacrifices. You know, I wonder, I even wonder now when, when all these sacrifices were made, how much blood was spent. Even the smell of dead cattle. I think some of us, we know when we run by a dead animal on the road, if it's been there for at least one or two days, it stinks. Skunks are number one. They just smell. Could you imagine all the bloodshed that would take place leading up to the Day of Atonement? Hold fast is to persevere, that is to keep our confession. So what is that confession that it's talking about? Well, it's very simple. It's our confession of our salvation that we believe in Jesus Christ died on the cross for our sins and that he arose and now is seated at the right hand of God. That's the confession that we have to have. And I'm telling you what, the world does not like that. You see, the world wants to confess their agenda because if you're not for them, you're against them. Even if you humbly disagree, it doesn't matter to the world. But we need to hold fast. We need to persevere in our faith. I know it's difficult at times. Been there and done that, and I still will face those difficult times. Keep your faith. Hold on to your faith. Confess Jesus only. Only confess him. And in verse 15, we see that Jesus identifies with us. He sympathizes with us. Jesus was the very son of God, yet his divinity did not prevent him from experiencing 
our feelings, our emotions, our temptations, and our pain. God became man. He became Jesus to share triumphantly the temptations and the testing and the sufferings of mankind in order to what? That he might be sympathetic and understanding, high priest. Friends, Jesus faced the same temptations that we do today. He had to do that. But you know what was so awesome about the temptation about Jesus? He didn't sin. He did not sin. And believe it or not, there's, there's groups of people out there thinking that you have faith in Jesus Christ that you cannot sin. That's hodgepodge. That's, that's ridiculous. Because you could have dreams at night that's not contrary to the word of God. Well, you just sinned, did you not? Or you avoided your spouse on something. You got mad at something. Jesus never sinned, and that is so important. In verse 16, we as believers can draw near to God because of his sacrifice on the cross. We can freely and boldly speak and approach God like in our prayers. We can approach God. You know, as believers, we're a kingdom of priests. When Jesus, in the Gospels, when Jesus died on the cross, the veil was torn at the temple in Jerusalem. We can have access to God. Through Jesus Christ, we as sinful people can come before a holy God where we can receive mercy and grace and not condemnation. But sometimes there is discipline. The author of Hebrews views heaven as a spiritual tabernacle, but at the same time, a heavenly throne where God dwells with Jesus. God can help us through Jesus Christ in our times and trials and temptation by Jesus' own character. God with Jesus at his right hand dispenses help from heaven to those who need the forgiveness of sins and strength in times of those temptation. And not only that, just in our regular struggles of life living here on earth before we get to heaven, we have trials, we have suffering but we have access to God. Don't be afraid to pray boldly to God. We can speak softly to God and sometimes be bold with God. He wants us to communicate with him. Remember that. Anywhere that you are, when you do prayer in your your own private time, speak to God. Like sometimes I notice during our fellowship before service, right, or even after, we talk to each other, right? We understand that we communicate with each other. God wants that with us. Second point this morning, Jesus as our high priest was appointed by God from Hebrews 5, verses 1 through 6. In verses 1 through 4, it describes the Old Testament priests, very easy and right down to earth, come from one of the tribes, Levitical tribe, right, Levi's, right? Stands before God on humanity's behalf. That's what a priest does. Offers gifts and sacrifices for sin. Deals gently with sinners because earthly priest is a sinner also. And the priest does not take personal honor but is honored by God's choice and use. I like that one because you know what? You don't have to be a pastor to be witness for God and Jesus Christ. We are kingdom priests. We're a royal priesthood. When Jesus died on the cross, everything changed. What do you think the mission was? Go and make disciples. It's not up to pastors to do that. We are do that. We do that. But it's for everybody. Jesus, again, fulfills with the exception that he is the perfect high priest without sin. And he does not need to present a sacrifice for himself. Right? Right? He doesn't have to take the bull or anything else and sacrifice it. He sacrificed for us. He didn't need anything to take his place because he is perfect. 
In verses 5 and 6, we look at it. Jesus did not exalt himself to be a high priest. Those, again, chosen by God. God the Father appointed Jesus to be a, the high priest as seen in some of the Psalms. In other words, Jesus did not honor himself or glorify himself to be a high priest. Jesus was humbled. Jesus combines the role of high priest with the status as a son of God. Jesus is so much more that mankind could give him credit for. Jesus deserves our praises every single day. We are also to give Jesus the glory. And do we do that every day? When we wake up and thank God for being alive, what do we do thanking God and Jesus for what? For what they did for us. They deserve all the glory. When we look at verse 5 and 6, verse 5 says, You are my son, today I have begotten you. And that is taken from Psalm 2, verse 7. And in verse 6, you are a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. This is from Psalm 110, 4. And you know us in verse 6, it talks about Melchizedek. Honest question, how many people have a hard time saying that word? I still do. <laughs> and I was praying that God actually said, let me say it right. Or even spell it. <laughs> Melchizedek appears in three sections of scripture. He is briefly introduced, as we see in Genesis 14. The author of Hebrews, in speaking of Christ, quotes this ver in verse in Hebrews 7:17. 7, Genesis provides background regarding the identity of Melchizedek. Psalm 110 connects Melchizedek to the Messiah. And Hebrews 5, 6, and 7 describe the supremacy of Jesus Christ as a great high priest, using Melchizedek's role as an illustration of Jesus' priesthood and kinship. Remember, Jesus is what? Prophet, priest, priest and king. And sometimes, it depends on the version of the scriptures that you have, the Bible utilizes the phrase, the order of, to point, and it points to a lineage. An Aaronic priest would have been a priest according to the order of Aaron, as seen in Hebrews. These priests would have come from the lineage of Aaron, sharing a similar function in nature. Genesis 14 is the crux of what, what we see about Melchizedek, describes him as the king of Salem, which become what? Jerusalem, and the priest of God most high. And I love this one too. Abraham recognized him of his priesthood through his tithing and possessions he had taken in battle. Scripture, he did not hesitate. He didn't hesitate. He recognized who Melchizedek was and is. Psalm 110 describes the messianic nature of Jesus' future role with an emphasis of Jesus' eternality. It is in a context of Jesus' kinship that David writes about the Messiah as being a priest forever in the order of Melchizedek. Priests, according to the order of Aaron, were not kings, but were priests alone. However, as the author of Hebrews says, Melchizedek was both a priest and a king. In the same way, Jesus holds a dual role of king, priest, and also prophet. The eternal nature order of Melchizedek is presented in Hebrews chapter 7, verse 3, and it reads, Without father or mother, without genealogy, without beginning of days or end of life, Resembling the Son of God, he remains a priest forever. In other words, Melchizedek appears in history with no record of a genealogy or ancestral line, no record of his birth, no record of his death. The point is, Melchizedek appears to transcend earthly existence. This makes him a type of Christ who truly does transcend earthly existence existence as the eternal king priest who has no predecessor and no successor in his high office. Jesus is the high priest. Nobody comes after him. One implication of Jesus' priesthood according to the order of Melchizedek is that the Mosaic law was insufficient to save. 
And in Hebrews 7, 11 through 12, we read, if perfection could have been attained through the Levitical priesthood, and indeed the law given to the people established that priesthood, why was there still need for another priest to come? One in the order of Melchizedek, not in the order of Aaron. For when the priesthood is changed, the law must be changed also. We needed a better priesthood. Mankind did. An eternal priesthood to save us from our sins. We needed Jesus. We still need Jesus. One who has become a priest, not on the basis of a regulation as to the ancestry, but on the basis of power of an instructable life. Again, a priest is a mediator between God and man. Remember that. Jesus is our mediator. Jesus is our mediator. Not only is Jesus the sympathetic high priest as seen in Hebrews 4, but he is the king as well. Jesus will physically reign as king in Jerusalem, and his kinship will be ever, ever lasting. Much like Melchizedek was both priest and king, Jesus is also both priest and king. He is the eternal mediator between God and man and the final authority as reigning king, soon to return to establish his physical kingdom here on earth. Amen to that. Point three, Jesus, our great priest, embodies obedience. And you can even say perfection. Perfection. We see in verse 7 that while Jesus was on earth, he offered up prayers, supplication with loud cries and tears to God. If you don't understand the humanity of Jesus Christ when you read that scripture, you have to. How many of us have cried? It could be joyful cry, sad cry, sad tears. And it depends on what culture you live in. You have wailing, Right? You see the wailing of tears. When Jesus offered our prayers and supplications, this may relate to Jesus' Gethsemane experience as seen in Matthew 26 or in Luke 22. This is possibly related to the rabbi's three levels of prayer showing the intensity of Jesus' emotion in the Garden of Gethsemane or his high priestly prayer in John 17. Jesus was being submissive to God in his supplications. Jesus clearly shows obedience and reverence to God. This is an example for us in our prayer life. You know what? Sometimes when I talk about we have, we can be boldly to God in prayer, but we have to be submissive to God. Right? Right? We notice what happens when we have somebody in authority over us and we're not submissive. Are they going to listen to us? They're going to find us guilty before we even get to that certain point of being not guilty. And I love this phrase in verse 7, who was able to save him from death. And Jesus was not hoping to escape death either at the cross or at the grave. It was, it was for his very purpose that Jesus came to earth to die on the cross. A more clear or accurate translation is save him out of death. Jesus clearly was not asking to be saved from dying, but to be saved out of death. That is to be saved from remaining in death. Jesus was not asking to avoid the cross, but to have the assurance of his resurrection. Right, And I'm sure because he was human, he had to be thinking about his disciples also. And in verse 8, in regards to suffering, even though Jesus was God's son, God in human flesh, he was called to suffer. We are called to suffer. Jesus learned the full meaning of the cost of obedience all the way to his death. From the things which he suffered, and because of his suffering, in obedience to God, God affirmed Jesus as the perfect high priest. Even for us today, does suffering cause us to be obedient? Or if you switch it the other way, maybe if our obedience to God was first, maybe our suffering might not be as bad. I don't know. I was thinking about that. 
And when we are suffering, who do we usually call on first, right? As believers, right? We call on God, right? When we're suffering. We do that. I'm glad that we have God, that he can listen to us. Believe me, every one of us here has a story of what God has done in our lives by being obedient, having our supplications to him. In verses 9 through 10, Jesus in his suffering and death fulfilled the third requirement for a high priest. He offered the sacrifice of himself and in doing so became the perfect high priest and a source of salvation. Jesus was not, of course, made perfect in the sense of having his nature improved. Listen, Jesus was eternally perfect in righteousness, holiness, wisdom, knowledge, truth, power, and in every other virtue and capability. Neither his nature nor his person changed. He became perfect in the sense that he completed his qualifications for becoming the eternal high priest. Again, by Jesus dying on the cross, he opened the way of eternal salvation. The priests of the past, have we seen in the Old, Old Testament, and the priests of today, wherever whatever denomination or religion they're at, they can't provide a way for salvation like Jesus did. It's impossible. And in verse 9, when it says, to all who obey him, it's not that regarding commandments, rules, and regulations, it is not obedience to the law, but obedience to faith. God wants us to obey him and starts with what? Accepting Jesus Christ as our Savior and Lord. It is grace that we are saved and not by our own doing. In conclusion, Jesus, our great high priest, identifies with us. Jesus is appointed by God as a high priest and he embodies obedience. Now, one thing that came to my mind and I was preparing this message a little bit when was, we were up in Minnesota. You know what? This should be part of evangelism. And I was thinking to myself, well, we don't really share that, that Jesus was a high priest. Because in the culture that we live in, some people see a priest as what? You've seen on TV, right? Or the bad side of it with a sexual misconduct, Right? So people have a wrong picture of a priest. So you know what? When you talk to someone, incorporate Jesus as high priest because he's perfect. He is there for us. He's there for the world. So as we close, uh, heads bowed down for a moment. I'm going to read you something that when I was on the track doing some prayers and getting ready for worship, that... These lyrics really struck me out. It's from a song, Once for All, by a group out of Australia, City of Light. And I, I, I think I play at least three or four times a week because I need that refreshing every day that once and for all he died for me. Our God, he bridged the great divide to offer us eternal life, sending hope within a man. Oh, his love, it never fails. And his love, it never fails. He came to flesh to fight our cause with power to tame the ocean's roar. Taking on our sin and shame, he has opened up the way. He has overcome the grave. And now we live forever free because of Christ, the offering. No fear in life, no stain in death. For a God has come for us and our God has paid the debt. Father, we thank you for what Jesus has done in our life. And the Holy Spirit, remind us every single day, not that only Jesus died for our sins, but that he is there for us now as a perfect high priest. In Holy Spirit, Father God and Jesus, I pray that whoever need, needs Jesus, that they would come and accept Jesus as Lord and Savior. Father, we humbly thank you for, for what you did on the cross. 
And we all look forward to the day when you come back and establish your earthly throne. And we cannot wait, Father God, that when we are in heaven, we'll be perfect. There'll be no crying, no hurt, no pain, no suffering. So, Father, we do give you thanks for today, thanking you for not only physical life, but eternal life. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Terry. Man, uh, I love this passage of Scripture um, talking about Jesus, high priest. And I'm going to just focus in on one little passage, uh, one verse here. Then let us approach God's throne of grace with confidence so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. Now, you may think, how can I approach the throne of grace? How can I approach the throne of God with confidence? I mean, I've, I've done lots of things. I've thought about things. I've, I've, I've talked about people, just whatever is in your life, whatever you've done. It's like, I, I'm not worthy to approach God's throne. You're right. You're not worthy, and neither am I. But if we go through Jesus, as Pastor Terry talked about, the high priest, as we go through Jesus... So don't think you've got to have everything right, everything good to approach God, because we do that through Jesus. So this week, I just want to encourage you, when you want to approach God, do it through Jesus. Jesus, please forgive me of, of my sins. Please help me to live right for you. Make me holy through your blood. Make me holy through your sacrifice. And as I approach the throne of God, he's going to see you through the eyes of Jesus and the sacrifice he made for him. So don't think you've got to have it all together. <laughs> None of us have it all together. None of us. And that's okay. That's perfectly fine. Because we are made perfect through our perfect priest. You don't want to miss next week. Um, and uh, you, you don't know what you're going to get, you know. You just don't know what you're going to get. Now, I know what I'm talking about, but there's no series, and so it's going to be pretty exciting, okay? So I'll be preaching next week, and so invite some friends. I want to encourage you uh, to do that. And uh, we do need to do something that we haven't done in a while, and uh, we actually need to stack the chairs uh, 10 high. And the reason why is because um, we've got to get the floor ready because they are um, they're waxing the floors this week to get it ready for, uh, for school. So we're going to have some, uh, uh, some gentlemen uh, get some of the dollies out and, and, and put the chairs, start the chairs on the dollies, but 10 high. But I want you to visit with people first. Don't just start doing that. I know some of y'all are like, I'm a doer. just want to get her done. And that's great. But just feel free to, to uh, visit with folks, and then we'll sack some chairs. I love you guys, and we'll see you all next week. Thank you all so much.